after the three-day coast to the moon, the rather ungainly-looking lunar landing craft parted company from the command module to begin its descent to the surface of the moon, Ron Evans remaining in the command module to orbit the moon for three more days. In a preliminary orbit with the command module beneath them in the distance, the astronauts passed over their landing place, a flat valley in an area called Taurus Littoral, where they would look for young lunar rocks and signs of volcanic activity. The landing on the valley floor was one of the most accurate of the Apollo program, the dust flying as the astronauts inched toward the surface. Contact. Stop push. Engine stop. Okay, Houston, the Challenger has landed. Roger, Challenger, that's super. Houston, you can tell America that Challenger is a torrent literal. First Sun and then Schmidt left the lunar module to begin their exploration. As I step off at the surface at Taurus Littrow, we'd like to dedicate the first step of Apollo 17 to all those who made it possible. Their first job was to unload equipment, including their rover, the electric car in which they would drive to the exploration sites. They also began setting up the instruments of the automatic laboratory, which would transmit signals back to Earth after they left. Hey, do you need me, Gene? Yep. I'm going to go deploy an ALSEP. Have at it. OK, Bob, I've got my tools of the trade right here. Drilling core samples of the so-called lunar soil was one of their first t early tasks as Houston plotted their position. Pulling core was not always, however, as easy as they anticipated. Yeah, well, we're, out, we're out and you get the blanket of camel off for sure now. Yeah. Man, it didn't feel like this stuff was that hard. No, I'll get it. I knew there was something I needed to get do. Get the jack in over here, other side. Let me, let me uh, put some weight here. He's going anywhere. Oh, he's going slowly, though. Very slowly. I'm going to get this thing out now that I got it. Boy, you know, that's what you call getting down into your work. It's 29 and a half. Yeah, it's 29 and a half minutes from now, but remember, they left this side a little bit late. There he is. Okay. So Jim, you better make it clear to Parker that we got the pull out. Even as the astronauts were urged on to their next stop, scientists were interpreting the first signals of the experiments which had already been put into action. Well, many parts of the ALSEP are functioning very well. The uh, heat flow experiment is working excellently. It's transmitting back temperature data. The uh, cooling down is still cooling down from the, uh, the drilling process, and in a few hours, they should be starting to get true heat flow information. Let's see if I can't crack the uh, corner and get that contact. See if I can't get it. <laughs> Look at the folders out there. <laughs> Despite being on the moon, Cernan and Schmidt were quite clearly not overawed by being the focus of so much scientific attention. I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of oh, December. Now, May. May. May is the month. May, that's there. right. May is the year of the month. Oh, what a nice day. Oh, funny there's not a cloud in the sky, except in the earth. I think that'll stop the dust, that one. The second day of exploration began with repairs to the rear fender of the rover, which had broken the previous day. In Houston, Apollo 16 Commander John Young had worked that night in a pressure suit trying to find a way to repair the damage. Following his instructions, the astronauts made a new fender formed from a lunar map molded with tape and held in place with clamps from the lunar module telescope. The repair was successful and the astronauts were no longer bothered by dust as they drove to a series of sampling stations after setting up further experiments in the neighborhood of the lunar module itself. Here, 
they're somewhere along this rim where they can see. But they're but they're dropping, Bill, so they must be coming across that point. We're right where we wanted to be for station two. And it looks like a great place. Big blocks. It looks like quite a bit of variety from here. Different colors anyway. Pretty hard, isn't it? That boat is gonna roll. Man, that is hard. <laughs> Just don't stub your toe. The foreground features are somewhat different. That's simply because they were farther up onto the hill, I think. But that's, otherwise, that's remarkable. Pottery, it's obviously very, uh, very cohesive because it's, it's, uh, the bottom of the core is not smooth. It's very jaggedy and fragmental-like. Gene's finished with the uh, uh, core tube. Then we should be able to go. If we get that all that. Jack Schmidt having a few problems. Of all the stations sampled during the second day, none caused more excitement than the find close to a crater called Shorty. With only a limited supply of oxygen and water in the backpack sea, astronauts were bound to a tight schedule. Every minute of their exploration had been carefully planned ahead of time using detailed photographs made by orbiting cameras. Surprise discoveries like the orange soil left the scientists at Houston with tantalizing decisions. In the end, shortage of time always sent Cernan and Schmidt hopping back to their rover and on to the next site or back to the lunar laboratory to activate experiments. We'd like you to leave immediately. Okay. My golly, this time goes fast. While Cernan and Schmidt had been exploring, Ron Evans in the command module had been taking photographs and operating experiments directed at the moon's surface. After three days of observation, he was rejoined by his crewmates. 99, proceeded. Three, two, one. Houston. Right away, Houston. That's your good. Ag thought. Get over. over. Their exploration and scientific work behind them, the astronauts once again became pilots as they guided their lunar landing craft into dock with Ron Evans' command module for the flight back to Earth. They left behind an automatic laboratory which would function for years and several explosive packages to be detonated later in order to map discontinuities in the lunar interior. With them, they brought back 250 pounds of samples as well as a mass of recorded data. Their spot-on splashdown was a fitting climax to the Apollo program. Unfortunately, the orange soil was not what the scientists back at Houston had expected that it might 